In this short video, we're going to talk about creating Google Forms. When you log into Google Drive, you're going to click on Create, and you're going to click the link that says Form. What you'll have is an untitled form. This is where you're going to go ahead and put in the title of this form. And after you put in a title for your form, you're going to choose a theme below. So you can just scroll down and you can choose a theme. If you're not worried about what your theme looks like, you can just go ahead and click the plain default theme and click OK. And then what that's going to do is that's going to load your form for you so you can start building your quiz. And a lot of teachers like to use Google Forms for multiple choice questions. So you can create entrance exams, exit exams, just a real quick quiz to check understanding for students with a Google quiz. And what you're going to be able to do is put that Google quiz link out on your teacher web page and the students can take your quiz. But we're going to start from the beginning and that would be creating your actual quiz. What you can do is you can start building questions. And if you notice, scroll down, we start with one question, and then you have a button that says done. When you click done, that means you're completely finished with your quiz, but that doesn't mean you can't go back and edit it. If you hit done by accident, we can always go back and we can edit and we can add another item. But we're going to start building our quiz. If you look up at your menu bar, you have different choices under file. Edit, View, Insert, Responses, Tools, and Help. We're going to go ahead and start just by building our page. So we're going to start with question one. I can type question one from scratch, but if I already have my questions and my answers in another document, I can also copy and paste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a document that already has some of my questions and answers so that you can see how to copy and paste. Now I found my questions that I have. So instead of having to constantly type them, I can copy and paste. Here is the quiz that I'm building and I'm going to start with question number one. Question number one is going to be what was the Boston Tea Party? So I can type that or I can highlight the text and I can copy that with the short functions control C. I can come back to my quiz and I can click in the box where I want to paste that and press control V and I can paste that question without having to type it. That might save you a little bit of time. So once you're finished with your question you could add a help section if you wanted to give them some help with this answer or you can jump straight down here to your options and you can add as many options as you need to. I'm going to go back to my document and I'm going to check out the answer choices that I have. I'm just going to copy the first answer choice with a control C. I'm going to go back to my quiz I'm going to wipe out option one and I'm going to say control V and I'm going to paste that answer. If you click in the next box down, you'll be able to add another answer. I can go back to my document with my choices, copy answer B, control C for copy, control V for paste and you can copy all of your answers without having to type them. Or, if you feel comfortable and you just want to type them, you can. But I think this might save you a little bit of time. So when you highlight your text, Control C copies it. When you want to paste it, Control V will paste it for you. I'm finished with question one. So what I would want to do now is say add an item. If I click done, it's going to think I'm finished with my whole quiz. 
So I want to go ahead and say add an item. And right now I'm going to add a text item because I forgot to tell them to put their name in. So we're going to click on text and I'm going to say um, enter your first name. And I'm going to say this question is required because I need to know who is telling me these answers. Okay. And I'm going to add another one and I'm going to say add text. And I'm going to tell them to enter their last name. And I'm also going to say that this is required. And I'm going to hit done. Even though I'm not finished with my quiz, I want to show you a couple of things. When you hit done, it puts all of your questions in the order that you type them. However, I made a mistake because I wanted the first and the last names to be the first things the students entered on their quiz. So to get that first name box to the top, I see these four arrows. I can left click with my mouse and drag that question to the top and drop it. So I can do the same thing where I wanted them to enter their last name. I wanted that to be second. I can click with my left side of my mouse and drag it and I can drop it so that it's second. So what I wanted you to see is even if you don't enter them in the right order, once you're finished, you can drag and drop them around. Or if you need to edit a question again, you can always click on edit and it's going to open up editing mode so that you can edit that question. Or you can duplicate that question and you can even delete that question if you chose to. If you scroll down a little bit further, we should see add item again so that you can go ahead and you, you can move on to question number two. So you would just use the drop down arrow and click on multiple choice and that would pop up for you. If you're completely finished, you would hit done. There's a few other things that you can do to a quiz. You can insert a picture or a video. So if I wanted to insert a picture or a video, I could go up to insert and say image. If I click on image, it's going to allow me to search my computer for an image. So I can click choose an image and I can search for an image I want to upload and click open. And what that's going to do is it's going to put that image directly into my quiz and I can choose what title I want to give it. I could edit it if I wanted to, duplicate it or delete it if I chose to. Or I can scroll down and I can left align it center it or right align it. Once I'm finished with that picture, I can click done. You can also insert videos and I think it might be useful if you're building a quiz for students. Maybe you're inserting a picture and you want them to answer something about that picture. Or maybe you insert a video link and you want them to watch the video and answer those questions. So those are possibilities for you. Maybe you're flipping your classroom and you post a video and you want to make sure the students have watched your video. You could have them watch the video here in your survey and then have them answer two or three questions from the video to check their understanding. So the Google Form and Google Survey comes in really handy. When you're finished, click Done. And you can see your entire quiz. If you scroll to the bottom of your page, you have different options. Show link to submit another response. Publish and show a public link to the form results. I would be very careful about publishing any kind of information that has student names in it. So if you've asked them to enter their last name, I would not choose to publish those student responses. And then your last choice is to allow a responder to edit those responses after submitting. If you want a student to be able to go back and change their answers, then you could click Allow Responder to Edit. I choose to only let my students respond once. Once you're finished, you have a couple of choices. At the top, you're going to see a link that says Responses, and that'll tell you how many students have already answered your quiz. Once you click on Responses, 
Before you grade your quiz, you're going to come down to Change Response Destination, and you're going to click that. And there is where you're going to choose where the answers are going to be saved. I usually choose New Spreadsheet. It'll have the same name as my quiz. My quiz said Boston Tea Party Quiz 1, but it will have responses in parentheses behind it. So you'll be able to tell in your Google Drive which one is your form and which one is your responses. I like to keep them separate. If you like that, you can say always create a new spreadsheet for my forms and click create. Now you'll see that you have a link that says view your responses. So once students start to respond to the quiz, you'll be able to view their responses here. If I click view responses, it's going to open up that spreadsheet for me, and I'm going to be able to see all of the students that have responded to that quiz. If I want to look at the View Live Form, I can click View My Live Form, and it's going to show me my quiz, everything that the students will see. Now, if your form is great and you're ready to put it on your website, you can come up here to the address bar. You can right-click and copy that link. Or you can use your shortcut, Control C, to copy that link. You could go to your teacher web page and you could paste the link. And then students would have easy access to that quiz. And they would have easy access to, re to respond to that quiz. I'm going to go ahead and fill it out once so you can see what the responses look like. And I'm going to hit Submit. It tells me that my response has been recorded. I'm going to close that window. I'm going to go back to my quiz. As the teacher, I now see that I have one response. If I click View Responses, it's going to open up my spreadsheet, and it's going to show me my response. The nice thing about Google Forms is it gives you a time and date stamp. So if you tell the students they have to take a quiz on Wednesday, You'll know whether they took their quiz on Wednesday because there's a time and a date stamp so you know exactly when they took that quiz. I'm going to go ahead and close that window. If you need to go back and edit your form, you can go back and edit your form. You would just click on edit and you can edit your form. When you click on a question, you can click the pencil to edit and you can change anything on your form. Or you can even go back and add more items. If you didn't finish your form and you want to go back and add more questions, you can add more questions. 